Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Geyer from the Texas Back Institute, and what I would like to show you today is a patient that has been evaluated for a cervical artificial disc and take you through the surgery utilizing a new high-tech technology called 360. So feel free to take your finger and move it across the screen to see other parts of the visual images. What I'm doing here is going over the x-rays. And that's what's pinched the nerve that's giving the sensations down your arm. I hate that one. But that's what the Mobisi looks like. And I did bring... Um, Each patient, after I speak to them, will also go through an educational process where they'll sit down with one of our nurses to make certain they have a clear understanding of the surgery itself. Once we're in the OR, we have the patient totally draped out. So the only thing that we see is a small area of the skin where we will make our incision. The head is to the right of your screen or towards the bottom, and the feet are towards the top of the screen. Right now we are doing the approach. I'm making the skin incision, which is just a small two centimeter to two and a half centimeter incision, which is really just about one inch or less. Now you can see me actually dissecting deep until we get to the front of the spine. The nice thing about cervical disc replacement surgery is that it is a relatively bloodless procedure in that all we do is follow the normal, natural tissue planes of the body, which means that we separate the tissue planes. We don't really cut anything. We're checking the x-ray to make absolutely certain we are at the right position. Patients sometimes ask, how do we know where we are? Well, we have your preoperative x-rays, but then we always verify things with x-rays in surgery. This is what we call a C-arm, which is fluoroscopy, and allows us to take a short picture, but allow us to positively identify the level. And now that everything is in place, I'm actually going to mark the center of the disc. This is how we make certain that we center the disc so I make a little mark on the front of the spine with an electric cautery that makes a little tiny burn mark, but not any vital tissue because they're all protected. It's just in the very front of the spine. At this point, I'm beginning to clear out the disc. There's little tiny instruments that are like Pac-Man-like instruments that we actually remove the disc itself. We have to remove the entire disc so that we have just the bone that's exposed because it is the bone that will attach to the artificial disc to securely lock it in place. This takes somewhere between six weeks and 12 weeks after surgery. I continue to do my discectomy and then we actually go back into the spinal canal and we remove all the ligaments from behind and make certain that we have all the disc or bone spurs that are pinching the patient's nerve so that they will have relief of their arm pain after surgery. The first part of the clean out is just to remove all the degenerative disc. And then the next part is to complete the clean out so that we can clearly see from side to side. And then the last part is to insert the pins as you can see here, so that we can allow distraction so that we can clearly visualize the spinal canal. It is this part of the procedure in which we balance the motion segment by removing the ligaments and most importantly, removing the offending disc or spur that's pinching the patient's nerve. We use neuromonitoring during the course of surgery to make the surgery safe for the patient so that if I irritate a nerve, then they will let me know because they will uh, see an abnormal signal on the computer. And in fact, if you want to move the screen, you may be able to see the neuromonitoring tech that is off to the left and behind me off my right shoulder. We're just checking the x-ray to make sure we have the pins in proper position. It is these pins that allow me now to um, distract and clean the, the space out. Here we can see that I'm trialing different size implants. 
For each size implants, we have a trial. So what I'm doing, I'm going through the trial, I'm checking to make sure it has the right size. We want to put the largest size artificial disc in for several reasons. Number one, it allows us to center the disc in the front of the disc, that is from side to side when we take a, what we call an AP X-ray, but it's really uh, one that from the frontal view. And secondly, it also allows us to have better end plate or vertebral body coverage so that there is no subsidence, which means that we want to prevent the artificial disc from sinking into the bone. I'm putting the artificial disc in, I'm tapping it to the proper positioning, and now I am disengaging the holder, and I'm checking my position of the artificial disc to make certain that number one, it is where it should be by visual cues, and then we will check x-rays to make sure it's where I meant it to be placed. And here I'm just inspecting the edges, making a determination that I like the positioning. We're looking to make certain there's no bleeding from any of the bony edges. And now we are putting some material in the neck, it's called surgy foam, that helps stop the capillary oozing and prevents there from blood accumulation in the front of the neck. We absolutely want to close the wound when it is dry, meaning no oozing of any blood. So this is a very, very important part of the step. So now we're moving the x-ray machine and we're going to check what we call an AP, an anterior posterior view. But this would be the view as you would stand facing yourself, looking at yourself in a mirror. So now this determines if I like the position and if it's centered properly. The x-ray tech takes the picture, we inspect it, we make a determination that we like the positioning and it's exactly where I want it to be placed. And now we will actually then close the incision. During closure, we do not use any stitches on the outside of the skin. We use a plastic surgery closure in which we merely uh, put paper tapes or sometimes we'll put surface glue, much like super glue on the skin so that postoperatively the patient doesn't have to do anything special with the wound. Surgery went just as planned. Uh, the patient had a disc replacement at the C6-7 level, which we can see right here. And this is called the Moby C device. This is the side view of the neck, and this is the front view of the neck. What we look for is the alignment of the spine. And it has a little tiny curve here, but it's really the alignment within the disc base, which looks just perfect, and on the side view as well.